So I'm Adrian. I'm a Montreal Python member. I work for Ludia, a casual gaming company based uh, in a whole port in Montreal. We have about 2 million people playing daily to our games, and we do basically our Python uh, backend in using Pyramid for our Facebook games. And well, I, I want to, to share with you guys uh, um, the, the, our experience, well, a tiny window about our experience with Pyramid. Uh, a framework we, we actually uh, really like, but which can be painful. So, Pyramid Web Framework uh, doesn't have any opinion about your application. It lets you choose um, any persistence layer. Um, let's say uh, you want to use a, a SQL with uh, an object creation mapper, you can use a SQL Alchemy, or if you want to use Direct as a driver, uh, it even lets you write in files if you want to. Um, you can use any templating system. And there is no specific layout. Um, it provides scaffolds, comments, so sca different scaffolding, so that you can have you know, uh, uh, templates. But you can do basically whatever you want and organize the, the, your, your project the way you want. It, Pyramid really focuses on the web, the web aspects, which, well, it's a web framework. It makes sense. It really focuses on processing HTTP requests and ending view dispatch. So. I might have some Python code, too. So just a super simple example. Can you see that? So, it's, it, so the, the way it works, it's, it's quite, well, simple. Uh, using a configura uh, configurator, you, you basically define your routes. And then by scanning the module, it automatically, automatically map the, uh, the, your views to the root being matched. Um, in those two examples, you can see that I've been using, at the, the, the line 18, a direct a response object to return direct HTML. Uh, it's really a bad example, because actually don't do that. You might prefer the second form, where uh, you return a, a dictionary, and you use the renderer on the line 21st, yeah, on the line 21, the, the renderer to specify what, what rendering process you want to you wanna use. In that case, it's JSON, but P Pyramid provides um, template adapters, so you can use Mako, Jinja, or you can even write your own and extend it. So this is a really quick presentation for those uh, who don't know about Pyramid. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the good as aspect of it is that it, um, it takes no, it really don't 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 uh, put you in rails in in some rails. Well, it's a bad bad uh, bad uh, well joke, but it don't put you in rails. It lets you like define the way you want you where you want to work. This said, um, so it really focuses on HTTP handling and and let you choose any anything you want. But the the main problem is you must choose. And and well, at Ludia we've been working with uh, different teams, and at the beginning there were you know kind of using Pyramid, but in different ways, which can become a, a pain in the neck if, if you are like, switching to a, from a project to another one. Some people prefer to organize uh, their project by features, some others by components like views and model. I don't, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's organizing a project is, is really something personal, and it kind of can be kind of a religion. So the, 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 I would advise to set conventions, or at least document about them, and, and so that you don't you don't get lost in your own projects. The second part I want to talk about is the the advanced dispatch, because basically in this uh, in this tiny example, um, you see you see that we have two routes based on a pattern uh, slash and slash info, but the the uh, Pyramid is, is really provide a really advanced uh, dispatch system, which lets you basically it, it lets it lets you define a route is not only defined by its pattern. It can you can you can define predicates, so that you can um, with one route and different predicates uh, dispatch the same dispatch the same route to different views. So again, I guess an example will be better than a French accent. So. So like, let's look at this. So in that example, basically I had, uh, we have one route, which is like edit a profile. You see that the pattern, I can have like a, some match, some variable in my pattern. And then basically what I do is I use the predicate request method 
to dispatch differently depending on what request method I, uh, the request uh, is. So, and this is really, it's a good example. In, in that case, for example, let's say you are submitting a form. Um, the HTTP C holder here, location, which will return the 303, which is going to be mapped on this, which is going to show the form being f uh, filled. And it's really nice because if the user, you know, try to refresh the page, you're not going to have any alert. Ah, be careful, you're going to post twice the same. And also, you have a really good separation of concern. Uh, you don't have to define tons of different routes depending on the situation. Basically, you define a, a route, and then after, you can separate the, 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 the view, the, the processing. So you don't have uh, stuff such as if request.method equal post, I'll do this, else if it's get, I'll do that, which can be seen in other, other uh, language I won't name. Um, two, I have another example, and I do, yeah, a cool part also of the, the, the advanced dispatch and the, the predicates is that you can actually uh, have predicates based on security features. So here, for example, I have like uh, a user view, which, by the way, I had it a, a, a regular expression in the pattern. Well, you, you can do basically whatever you want with the, the, the pattern. And then after, depending, let's say there is a, a, an administrator co uh, connecting to the application, well, you don't want, again, you don't want in, in the same view, you don't want to do like, if my user is an administrator, uh, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna add some information. You might prefer to separate this in different views. So the first one might be like a simple profile view, and the second one be, being you know, some user detail view, which basically I also map to a different Mako template so that I can, I don't know, ban a user or, you know, giving some power-ups. I, I do games, so we have so, st stuff like this. And it's really handy, again, because it permits to have really separation between your stuff. Another really cool thing I, I did not mention is that those view config decorators do not modify the function. They register the function inside the registry of the application, but they do, not, they do not modify the function. It might, it might seem not important, but it is, when you because you can basically, you need test this really easily. Because basically what I'm, well, here I'm returning a empty dict, but basically in my test, I can, I can really test the, the dict itself rather than an HTML page. Um, do I have another example? I don't think I do. No, I don't. So, the advanced dispatch uh, aspect of Pyramid is, is really powerful. I'm really presenting a tiny part of it. The, um, so you can do predicates on, the, on requests. You can, you, you can even uh, add your own predicates, which is really handy. We've been, uh, well, I don't have time to talk about this. Uh, you can do predicates on authentication. The, the main problem with this, it's, it can become really complex because uh, the more you had routes and the more you have pages, it can be really tedious work to know, hey, where, uh, where is my slash users uh, in put or patch is mapped? And <coughs> hopefully, Pyramid provide uh, some scripts so that you can list your routes and, and views. And, and one is uh, p roots, for example, and it's, it's put in French, so it's always funny. And um, you also have complexity in authentication. The authentication, authentication system is not as flexible too because you can, only f you can only set one authentication policy. But again, you can extend it. Um, the next aspect I wanted to talk to you about is, is a really uh, a poor, super powerful uh, feature about Pyramid. I really saw it as, a, as super obscure, and uh, I didn't want to touch it, but... Oh, no, I want to talk about... Yep, yeah, this is not in the good order. Sorry, guys. So, another really nice aspect about uh, Pyramid is the, the way you compose your application and the way you extended it. So, basically, the Pyramid provides an include, uh, a way to include your modules and your sub-modules and you can really like uh, break apart different components of your application. So again, I might have a really nice example. 
that's it. So here, what I do, rather than, than directly define my root, my, uh, is I use the include uh, method from the configurator object, which I pass a, a, um, a module name. And I could even like pass a callable, but uh, it's, it's re generally you use a, a module name. And what it does, it, what it means, the, the, the interface is really simple. Uh, the, the module has to provide an include me method, which takes config as a first parameter. And then after, you can, basically, you can subcontract. So you could do like in your main, you're going to say config.include model, config.include views. So that, and then uh, the views is going to do like what, what is about the views. And uh, you don't mix up the roots, the, the, the model part, the SQL session handling. Um, and for example, in this when at the line 14, I include Pyramid SQL Alchemy Utility. What I do behind the hood is I'm adding this SQL se SQL session attribute to the request, which lazily open when I use it, and which is also which is uh, uh, closed as soon as the request uh, processing is finished. And this is only because I've I've, I've been using this line. So. We really use this way of organizing our code. So basically, we break apart every, everything, and we, do, we use the include to uh, compose our application. There is another example where basically it's uh, part of the Ludia history, where we had to do the same game twice. And the producer were really like, hey, guys, we have to do it really fast. So just do a copy and paste. And we were like, no, we're not about to do some copy and paste. And so why we did, and it's not obviously elegant, but the thing is, in real life, you have to, you know, deliver is always better than, than perfect. So what we did is we adapt the first application so that it can be includable by the, by the second one, and, and it worked. Basically, we did what it's at the line two. We include a wall application, reusing the wall, root, views, and then after, we just, like, override whatever we wanted to override so that we can change the tiny details of branding, stuff like this. Um, the next aspect I want to talk to you about is, so, yep. The, yes, the only pain with Pyramid is when you write a uh, Pyramid extension, so that kind of a Pyramid SQL, uh, such as Pyramid SQL Alchemy Utility, you're not writing uh, WSGI extensions, you're really writing Pyramid stuff. It's, it's just, just so that you know, because um, the next part is really, so the power of traversal. So this is probably one of my favorite uh, pyramid feature, probably because it's the last I've discovered. So uh, traversal is, a, is, a, is a more advanced than a simple URL dispatch uh, we have seen before to define root and uh, register views. Traversal basically is um, an algorithm which works in two steps. First, the context discovery, and then the view dispatch we've seen. Um, basically, what it did, it from a, from a root, root object associated with the request, it then traversed it using the dict-like uh, getItems method. So in that example, here is what the Python operation uh, under the hood when trying to reach this uh, user message. So. Uh, so, this, for example, would, at the end, uh, the context discovery would discover a user message, which then you can use predicates, the context predicate, then you can use, sorry, so yeah, then you can use the context, the context predicate on the view config decorator to map it to a, to a view. And I have tons of examples of it, I'm not, obviously I've, time, but so basically how it works is you set a root factory, and then after the root factory receives the request, and you provide the get high time so that you can traverse it. If you raise a key error, basically um, it's going to raise an HTTP not found. And then after you discover like the user collection, so you continue the, tra the traversal algorithm, returning a user resource. And then when you find your user's name resource, you can then map it to your views. The really handy part, again, is that you can, uh, basically, it's really handy for doing uh, 
REST API like uh, AP, REST API. And again, you can really separate it, and you can really separate the, the you do really a good separation of concern. The, it, it's really provide a hierarchical API in terms of documentation and code. Basically, you map the, use, you, the, the URI to, to traversal operation, the HTTP methods became the views, and the domain logic is the model. It's less common and simple than dispatch, plus the, 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 the scripts that you use to list all the routes and all the views disappeared because basically your you P routes would not list any routes. You don't define more, any more routes. You just define a root object which is going to be traversed. And one, one problem too is you have to write always the same, uh, your same bullet plate code. So it's kind of tedious because you, you have to repeat it or create a framework. With, so in conclusion, um, Pyramid is, if you, if you need to, to work on some API, is a really, really elegant and neat framework which permits you to really organize well the project. And we definitely like, uh, put more joy in developers' hearts than, than pain. So just, just use it. And if you have any questions, 